Alrighty, so the next method that we're going to discuss for computing a QR matrix decomposition is through the use of householder transformations. And I'll forewarn you quickly that this method, at least for me, is not necessarily straightforward. So let me explain what we're going to do more generally, and then we'll dive into the details of it uh, as we go through the code. The way that this process is going to work is we're going to compute uh, a series of Q and matrices right here, and we are going to matrix and multiply them all together, then multiply that product by our A matrix to get our R matrix. But we're going to be computing Q1, Q2, Q3, multiple different Q and matrices, and then taking the product of all those together. Then what we can do is we can just transpose this to get our actual Q matrix, because remember, A is supposed to equal QR, not QA is supposed to equal R. And so we're just going to transpose all those, and so we're going to have Q1 transpose, Q2 transpose, all the way up to Qn. And so I know this might be a little bit confusing right now, but just know that we are going to be computing or generating these different Q and matrices, getting a product of all them together, and then doing what you see right on the screen as a means of getting our R matrix. Now before we discuss this any further, the key benefit of this particular method over the Gram-Schmidt process is enhanced numerical stability. Now that's not something that I've discussed here on the internet yet, and that's certainly something that I should at some point in the future. But for those of you that do know what it is, I just want to throw that out there. For those of you that don't, just know that there is a benefit over Gram-Schmidt, but we'll certainly discuss numerical stability sometime in the future. So with Gram-Schmidt, we used projections, recall, to get our orthonormal matrix or our Q matrix in this QR matrix decomposition. Well, with the householder transformations, we're using reflections. And that's going to show up right now when we go through this code. So this is uh, the function I've written to compute a QR matrix decomposition through the use of householder transformations. And I think it's going to be best to understand the mathematics by translating this code into the mathematics. And you see in that first hand right there. So in the, these first few lines, you can see right here, we're getting the shape of our A matrix. We're storing a copy of our A matrix as our R matrix, and we're setting our Q matrix, which is going to end up being the complete product of all of our QN matrices, but we're going to first uh, set it as our identity matrix. And so this is what we're going to be going for. First, we're going to be looking to get a Q1 matrix in this particular configuration, but we're going to start off with that Q1 matrix being the identity matrix. Then as we change that identity matrix and matrix multiply uh, all the different QN matrices by that identity matrix, it's going to change our R matrix. And so really, as we change one side, it's going to change the other, and that's exactly what we want to have happen. And you'll notice that we only have one loop in this function. This is looping over all of the columns of our A matrix, except for the very last column. And you'll see why that's the case in a moment. But then we have these four lines right here. Now, what are all these four lines doing? Well, let's translate that to the mathematics, and it might make a little bit more sense. What we're doing is we're establishing this U vector right here. And we're doing that with different vectors of our R matrix, which in this case is really just our A matrix. So for the first iteration, or for Q1, we're really using the first column of our A matrix. Then we're going to subtract off a vector of all zeros with the exception of the two norm of that particular column put in the first position of that vector. And that is what all four of these lines are doing. The first thing that we're doing is we're getting that uh, two norm, setting that equal to alpha. This AVEC line right here is just establishing a vector of all zeros. The third line here is just setting that two norm into the first position of that vector of all zeros. And then we are just performing that vector subtraction that you see right here, again, for this first column of our A matrix, but in reality, it is our R matrix, because once we go to compute Q2, our R matrix is not going to be equivalent to our A matrix anymore. So then we have this line here for V, and this next line here called QN. What exactly is going on here? And so at this point, our I matrix is no longer really there. 
our R matrix is going to completely change, and we're just going to be dealing with uh, this Q1 matrix and getting this Q1 matrix, which is going to change our R matrix. So our R matrix is not going to be a copy of our uh, A matrix anymore. And so we have our U vector established from the previous four lines, and all we're doing with that first line that I showed you is we are normalizing that U vector and calling that normalized U vector V. Then what we're going to do to compute our QN matrix is just take the identity matrix and subtract off two times the product of our V vector by our V vector transpose. So V by V transpose is going to produce a matrix for us, so we're going to take the identity matrix of the same size and subtract that off. That's going to be our QN matrix. And so the normalization is just the first line, that identity matrix minus two times V by V transpose is just the second line. Alrighty, so this next line is a little bit confusing. It's going to come up when we go to compute Q2, so we'll touch on that more in a moment. But this R line right here is just updating our record for our R matrix by computing QN by R. Then we're just updating the record for our Q matrix by computing Q by QN uh, transpose right here, which is going to keep track of the transpose and it's just going to keep track of uh, the full product of all of these QN matrices transposed. And so what you'll see at this point is that for our R matrix, the first column is going to have everything zeroed out below the diagonal for that R matrix. And that's what each one of these QN matrices does, is it will zero out everything below the diagonal for the nth column of our R matrix. So when we compute Q2, we're going to be working with this submatrix. We'll get to that in a moment. But we're going to be zeroing out everything below the diagonal in this second column. And that's why we need to iterate over every single column of our matrix with the exception of the last column because with that last column, we're not going to need to zero anything out below the diagonal. To compute Q2, we're actually going to use this sub matrix right here, which is of smaller dimension. We're going to repeat all these same steps right here, but we have a problem. This sub matrix right here is two by two, and all the other matrices that we're dealing with are three by three. In order for us to perform proper matrix multiplication, we're going to need to fix that. And that's what this line that we skipped over from before actually does. What this line does is it takes this product right here of the, of the submatrices and it pads it with ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This is going to actually allow us to perform all of this matrix multiplication to get our cumulative QN matrix back out. Now, uh, to get a better understanding of what's going on with here, uh, here is the Jupyter Notebook with all the code and the references and the additional notes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go into... Uh, this function right here for QR by householder and I'm going to add in some print statements and we're going to rerun this with a different randomly generated A matrix so you can see exactly what's going on right here. And so the first thing that I want to show you is I want to show you what's happening with this QN matrix. So we're going to add two print statements right in here for the identity matrix minus two times V by V transpose and then I also want to print the same matrix out after we do this blocking in here. After we do this padding with ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else so we can actually perform the matrix multiplication. So here we go here you can see we have a 3x3 three three matrix right here. It's the same 3x3 three three from before. We don't need to pad anything because it's 3x3 three three and it all works. But when we compute Q2 which is right here, Q2 is 2 by 2 because we only need it to zero out because we just need it to zero out everything below the diagonal of this second column and so it's a 2 by 2 we're not going to be able to compute a, the product of a 3 by 3 and a 2 by 2 so we pad it right here with a 1 along the diagonal zeros everywhere else and it all checks out now there's one more quick thing that I want to do with these print statements right here and that is I want to show you what's happening to our R matrix with each iteration. There's only two iterations because this is 3 by 3 but we're going to print out our R matrix as we iterate through. And so you can see here is our R matrix after the first iteration and I want you to notice 
that these values below our diagonal are on order of 10 to the negative 16. We can effectively round those to being zero. Although right here, we still have a full value. Upon a second iteration though, you can see that these values are still on the order of 10 to the negative 16 in the first column of this R matrix, but below the diagonal in the second column, we have a value that is now on the order of 10 to the negative 17. Again, we can round that to be zero. It's effectively zeroed out, and that's what's happening down here when we actually print out our R matrix. Okay, and again, you can find all of that code linked in the description. I'll encourage you to go play with it. It's a Jupyter Notebook, so it should be really easy for you to run and just play with and experiment with. Add in those print statements. It's really helpful, but this is the final function that we are using to compute QR by householder. And now if we compare our results with the old randomly generated A matrix, and we compare that to that of Gramma-Schmidt, you can see that all these values are exactly the same. But notice that by householder, to perform this same QR matrix decomposition, it took 908 milliseconds compared to 552 milliseconds via the Gram-Schmidt process. And so although the Gram-Schmidt process is faster, a lot of people prefer to use householder because of that enhanced numerical stability. Now again, I haven't discussed that in depth with you guys. It's something to do for a future video, and it's certainly something important enough that it should merit its own video.